holding a number that three days ago, nobody believed was possible. 71.6% on the Otter benchmark, higher than Claude Opus 4. But here's the crazy part. This model is completely free and I just ran it on my laptop. What's up everyone, today? We're talking about DeepSeek V3.1, the AI model that just sent shockwaves through Silicon Valley overnight. And I have to be honest, after testing this for 48 hours straight, I believe we just witnessed a watershed moment in AI. Picture this. You're the CEO of OpenAI. You just launched GPT-5 with a marketing budget in the hundreds of millions. Anthropic just dropped Claude 4. Both of you are proudly calling these frontier models with premium pricing. Then you wake up one morning to find some obscure Chinese model quietly appeared on Hugging Face. No press release. No launch event. Just a simple description line. But when the community starts testing, it outperforms your most expensive model. That's exactly what happened three days ago. And I was here, tracking this entire drama in real time. At 2 a.m. that night, I was scrolling through Hugging Face when I saw DeepSeek V3.1 had just been uploaded. It only had 47 downloads at that point. I thought, whatever, just another Chinese model. But when I ran my first benchmark, I had to double check three times because I couldn't believe it. This model wasn't just good. It destroyed everything. You know I'm not a fan of hype, but numbers don't lie. DeepSeek V3.1 scored 71.6% on the ADER benchmark. Claude Opus 4 sits at 70.6%, GPT-40 at 69.2%. But here's the insane part. Cost per million tokens. GPT-4 costs $30. Claude Opus $75. DeepSeek V3.1, $1.10. I ran the same coding task on all three. GPT-4 cost me $47, Claude $73, DeepSeek $0.89. Cents. The task I tested was building an e-commerce API with authentication, database migrations, and unit tests. I recorded the entire process. DeepSeek wasn't just cheaper, it was faster, produced cleaner code, and handled edge cases that GPT-4 completely missed. But the most shocking number? 685 billion parameters with 128,000 token context window. To put this in perspective, this is a model larger than GPT-4, more powerful than Claude, but completely free. I spent 12 hours over the weekend dissecting V3.1's architecture, and I discovered something DeepSeek didn't advertise. They've solved the holy grail of AI, a hybrid architecture that actually works. Previously, Every hybrid model failed because of conflicts between reasoning mode and chat mode. IBM Watson, disaster. Google's early attempts, mediocre at best, but V3.1 has four hidden tokens I discovered. Search begin and search end for real-time web access, plus think and end think for internal reasoning. Watch this. I'm going to ask a complex question about recent crypto regulations. The model will think privately about its approach search real-time data, reason through implications, and give a comprehensive answer. Incredible. It doesn't just search real-time data. It thinks through implications in a sophisticated way. This isn't simple rag. This is true reasoning coupled with real-time knowledge, a combination that even GPT-5 hasn't achieved yet. But this story isn't just about technology. This is an extremely clever geopolitical chess move. I researched China's 14th five-year plan from 2020. They planned this five years ago. The strategy, flood the market with powerful open source AI to undercut Western competitors, and it's working. After V3.1's release, Nvidia stock dropped 4%. OpenAI's valuation came into question. Anthropic's pricing strategy is under scrutiny, but here's the subtle part. When DeepSeek trained this model with just $5.6 million in 2000 NVIDIA chips, compared to the hundreds of millions US companies spend, they proved that innovation isn't about throwing money around. This is David versus Goliath, but David has a slingshot made in China. Okay, enough theory. I gathered my team to stress test V3.1 in real-world scenarios. First test, code generation. My senior developer asked V3.1 to build a microservices architecture with Docker, Kubernetes configs, and monitoring setup. Result? Flawless. Code worked on the first try. Documentation was comprehensive. Error handling was sophisticated. Test 2. 
Data Analysis My data scientist uploaded a 50 megabyte data set and asked for complex statistical analysis and visualization. Result? The model processed the entire data set, performed advanced statistical tests, and generated beautiful visualizations with insights I'd never thought of. Test 3. Creative Writing I personally tested creative capabilities. I asked it to write a sci-fi short story about AI consciousness. The output was unsettling. Not just well-written, but philosophically profound. It made me question whether we're looking at mere pattern, matching or something deeper. Test 4. Multilingual Performance I tested Vietnamese, English, and Chinese simultaneously in one conversation. Seamless switching. Context maintained across languages. Cultural nuances preserved. Honest assessment? In 70% of tasks, V3.1 matches or exceeds GPT-4. In coding specifically, it's superior, but I won't sugarcoat this. V3.1 has serious limitations. Problem 1. Size and infrastructure. 700 gigabyte model size. You need serious hardware to run it locally. Most people will have to rely on cloud providers, which defeats part of the purpose of open source. Problem 2. Fine-tuning complexity. Unlike smaller models, fine-tuning V3.1 for specific domains requires expertise and resources that not everyone has. Problem 3. Quality inconsistency. During testing, I noticed V3.1 is sometimes brilliant, sometimes bizarrely wrong. It's less consistent than GPT-4 in edge cases. Problem 4. Geopolitical risks. Using Chinese AI infrastructure raises legitimate security concerns for enterprises, especially in sensitive industries. These aren't deal breakers, but they're real considerations. So, what's the actual impact on the industry? Immediate impact over the next six months. First, pricing pressure. OpenAI and Anthropic will have to cut prices or add significant value to justify premium pricing. Second, open source acceleration. Expect Meta, Microsoft, and Google to rush out competitive open models. Third, enterprise adoption. Companies will seriously evaluate open source alternatives to cut AI costs. Fourth, developer ecosystem explosion. We'll see a boom in tools, frameworks, and applications built on V3.1 long-term implications over one to two years. I predict we're witnessing the Linux moment of AI. Just like Linux eventually dominated servers despite Microsoft's dominance, open source AI models will capture significant market share. But here's my controversial prediction. This will ultimately benefit innovation. Competition forces everyone to improve faster. OpenAI's response? They're probably working overtime on GPT-5 improvements. Anthropic? Likely accelerating Claude 5 development? The losers? Mid-tier AI companies without clear differentiators? The winners? Developers? enterprises, and ultimately end users. Okay, practical time. How can you actually use V3.1, option one, cloud providers? Together, AI charges $1.10 per million tokens. Groke offers lightning fast inference. Replicate provides easy API integration. Option two, local deployment. If you have serious hardware, you need minimum 80 GB VRAM with multiple A100s. Recommended setup is four A6000s or two H100s plus 128 GB by RAM or more. Option three, hybrid approach. Use smaller quantized versions for development, full model for production. I've set up a complete guide with code examples, deployment scripts, and optimization tips. Real world applications I recommend, code generation and review, data analysis, and visualization, content creation and editing, research assistance, and customer support automation. The sweet spot. Tasks where you need GPT-4 quality but can't justify GPT-4 costs. So what does this mean for you personally? If you're a developer, learn the V3.1 API now. Early adoption advantage is real. Consider migrating costly GPT-4 workflows. Experiment with hybrid architectures. Build applications that leverage open source economics. If you're a business owner, evaluate current AI costs versus V3.1 alternatives. Run pilot projects with open source models.
Consider data sovereignty implications. Plan for AI cost reduction strategies. If you're an AI enthusiast, this changes the game completely. Open research opportunities have expanded. Community-driven. Innovation is accelerated. We now have democratic access to frontier AI. My personal take? I've migrated 60% of my personal AI workflows to V3.1. The cost savings alone justify the effort, but the capabilities are genuinely impressive. However, I still use GPT-4 for mission-critical tasks where consistency matters more than cost. So final thoughts? DeepSeek V3.1 isn't perfect, but it represents something profound, the democratization of frontier AI capabilities. For the first time, a small team with limited resources has created something that rivals big tech's best efforts. That's not just impressive, it's revolutionary. This forces a question, if open source can match closed source quality at a fraction of the cost, what exactly are we paying premiums for? The answer will define the next phase of AI evolution. I want you to try V3.1 yourself. Share your results in the comments. If this content was valuable, hit subscribe. I'll continue tracking major AI developments. Join our Discord where the community experiments with V3.1 daily. One final disclaimer. I'm not sponsored by DeepSeek or any AI company. These are my genuine impressions after extensive testing. The AI landscape just fundamentally shifted. The question isn't whether open source will compete with closed source, but how closed source will adapt to survive. What do you think? Are we witnessing the beginning of the end for proprietary AI dominance? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video where we'll deep dive into building actual applications with V3.1. Stay curious, stay innovative, and remember, the future of AI might just be open.